About 15 years ago, I started on this camel. I, I bought a, a, a clock, and it turned out the clock was a dash clock for a Sopwith camel. And then I found a compass, and that clock and that compass, they were the Garmin 1000 of 1918. Now, here we are 100 years later, so I'm like, oh, I want to put an airplane together. So I started, bought the wooden panel, you know, cut it out, bought the original drawings, and started making an airplane. For years and years, I just collected parts and, and built things, but I thought, well, I'll never find an engine. And uh, one day, a gentleman who was in the EAA with me, he said, oh, I have a World War I airplane engine. And we went to his house, and what he had was a Gnome Omega, which is a very primitive, early form of the rotary engine. Mm -hmm. And so I restored that, brought it here to Oshkosh a couple years ago, ran it, and a museum in Paris, France, saw that, and they needed it for their Blario. So he said, hey, we'll trade you for a Clerget. So I did the trade, so then I had the engine, all the instruments, and the blueprints, so I'm forced into building the airplane. <laughs> it's a very complex airplane, very difficult to build. And the, the nuts and bolts aren't made today. They're British standard fine. It's an unusual thread pattern that I had to have everything machined, so you could go and buy anything commercially made. It had to all be handmade. I just, I want it to be right. I'll build a part, I'll put it on. If I'm happy with it, we'll continue. Uh, I could have three or four of these now with all the parts I've thrown away that I'm just not happy with. But when it's when I'm happy with it, it'll be finished and we'll fly it. And it, I'm thinking two or three more years. It will be a flyable, airworthy airplane. I'll fly it at, at shows. You know, I'll take it to Dayton, I'll take it to Oshkosh and enjoy it that way. It's meant to be out here where people can enjoy it and see it and see it fly.